hello then viewers. Welcome back to Glory Hunt. So uh, things have got tricky. Hello then viewers. Welcome back to Glory Hunter with me, Lord Twenty FM. Good to see you. I hope I find you. Very, very well. You knew this was coming. My new catchphrase. I hope I find you well. It's a good catchphrase, isn't it? I hope everyone's okay. It's not quite no lighty, no likey, but it's uh, or no likey, no lighty. See, I don't even know it. Whereas I hope you, I hope you well. That's a classic, really. You can see then, since our four-one defeat to Reims last time out, where Theo Lucas got a consolation goal that meant very little, we followed up with a rousing performance against Lazio, uh, beating six 0 It was a disgrace, viewers. So yeah, it's going well, really well. And I'm following that up. With a 2-2 draw against Montpellier and defeat to PSG. And I'll be honest, viewers, I was in the doldrums. I was sad. I felt, I felt like there was no hope until Nims came along. We beat them 2-0. That cheered me up a little bit. A 0-0 against Norwich, actually not a bad result. A 2-2 against Angers SEO, where I got a bit complacent. And uh, they scored and then scored again. And panic stations, viewers, uh, before a 1-0 a win over Marseille, actually, which is a really big result. Away at Marseille as well. We'll take that. Today, another big contender, uh, Monaco to play. Before well, before that, though, Le, le, le Puy Foot. Uh, Puy? 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 Oh, don't know. But it's the French Cup ninth round. They're in Ligue 2. So it might be a chance for us to have a little bit of rotation. So I meet a few players that you don't get to meet all too often, viewers, before that big game coming up then against Monaco uh, in six days time you can see then looking at the league and table we are right up there with monaco nancy having a fantastic season and psg and leon do seem to still be running away with it a little bit eight points the gap between those two and third so lots of room to make up on and of course that third place position that's what we really want yeah being in europe's great but if we're going to progress with nice and we've got you know we're on a time limit here viewers then we've got to try and get in the champions league and start attracting that bigger clientele getting in more money through the door as well of course so that's the plan let's hope really, hopefully we can make it happen let's kick things off though with the french cup of course a competition we need to win so let's get through that first round Right, I'm just having a little bit of a, a play around here for you. Now, I've changed the diamond up a little bit since we last played it. I've taken away the Shadow Striker, and I've actually moved the a the AF and the DLF, the advanced forward and the deep line forward, uh, to the other side. Uh, Kim hyuk Su has been a real like force this season. Eight goals in 17. He's got 19 finishing now. Really, really great like, attributes. Um, lacks a little bit maybe in terms of link-up play, but generally speaking, really, really good. That teamwork and passing, not quite necessarily what I'd like it to be, but still, in terms of being a striker, really great attributes for him. And, uh, yeah, he's having one hell of a season so far for me in his debut year for Nice. Uh, so, again, trying to change things down a little bit, bringing Lee in. Uh, what I've been trying to do a little bit, again, you can see the double Mazala has gone as well. Uh, Bernard playing in his more natural role. Yanchev and Amarillo sort of sharing that deep line playmaker um, role as well. With Lee in the centre here today as a ball in midfielder on defend, I like it. Uh, Lowe's going to continue at left-back. Centre-back's going to continue to be Diallo and Haman. And uh, Puente is going to come in. Puente? Probably Puente, Ben. Car Juan Carlos Puente. Of course, we remember him at the very start of the season. Brought in as our first-choice keeper. Um, hasn't actually played for me yet. A million pounds he was bought for. Um, and, of course, after that big injury early in the season, hasn't really featured. But today, gets a chance to showcase his abilities. Uh, there's an option for me here, really, actually, to play a few of the other fringe players who really need to be playing a little bit more you can see i've been playing my 11 quite a lot and the subs on the bench as well all quite fit some of the players we've brought in actually not too bad in terms of fitness so we've definitely got a squad that are able to come on and perform at match sharpness uh but yeah this is going to be a bit of an exercise in trying a few different things i'm going to put a few boys on the bench four's going to come on uh, and play in there somewhere Schofield. In, fact, in fact he's going to start viewers get him a start ben i have enough on the bench actually no schofield's there we're fine okay come on then i'm hoping viewers this will be a bit of a goal fest that's the that's the dream but away from home Anything's possible. <laughs> Borsting getting a little bit of a, uh, a break as well. I've been trying a few things. Like, we could almost also play the Christmas tree formation. So, there's been a few games where I've tried that out, where you play, obviously, two behind the one. You play Mikel Terena and Joe Victor in that top sort of thing. We may well do that against Monaco if uh, if this doesn't go very well. But let's see then. 4-4-2 four, four, for them. 4-3-1-2 uh, for us. And come on, I'll show you what you can do to keep the run going. What run? All right, first chance actually goes their way. They're wearing a lovely light blue as, well, Poeta there does a really good job. Poente, Poente, Ben, Poeta. Who's, who's Poeta? Just make, again, just making it up, viewers. As yeah, you can see, we're lying to try and keep the ball. We, we know the Nice style by now, whether we're playing a diamond or a slightly 
a different diamond, although the shape is very similar. We're giving the ball away pretty horrendously there, it must be said. As, sorry if you hear a squeak there, my apologies. As they're falling on this right-hand side, of course, they've got a little bit of space to manoeuvre out there. And it's about us getting control of the ball in these areas, taking it off this central midfielder and trying to break. But that ball over the top is really, really good. Remember, the French Cup is something you need to win. And we're behind. Oh, no. Six minutes gone, viewers. It's already a disaster. Away against a Ligue 2 team and it's not going very well okay we need to i think the phrase is fix up and look sharp viewers so far we're fixing up and we're not sharp enough so i'm always in a bit of a quandary with the front two whether we play joe victor up there whether we, whether we play two advanced forwards in Huxu and ivanov there's there's options and i'm not really sure what the best options are i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna speed things up we've got a lot of technical ability let's let's go for this a bit more all right there's a highlight since their goal it's been incredibly quiet you can see from the bar at the top there no highlight since it so it's going to be a case of whether we can get back ourselves back into this game. Haman plays a really interesting ball and hooks who's on this. Can he find the back of the net? He should have done. 19 finishing for that. And at half time then, we are behind. <laughs> we are behind in the French Cup, which is obviously was not the plan today. Goal fest is the phrase I think I used. Four's going to come off. Schofield's going to come on. And uh, Mikkel Torreina is going to go back to that shadow striker position, I think. Schofield's going to play... I think advance forward alongside Huxley, the two of them are going to hopefully cause a few more problems now. It's the, obviously the January period's entered and I'm debating big time really whether we go whether we go for wingers. That's the that's the debate in my mind. Lee's going to come off, come off as well. He's not really done that much wrong but I'm going to change things back to how they normally are. Mazzala as well for Yanchev. Have the attacking midfielders really attacking. Now we've got sort of a, now our midfield is going to go for this a little bit more. Hopefully we're not too exposed. In fact we don't really need to be attacking. When so many players are on attack duties to attack at the same time really just forces defenders out of position. So hopefully the boys that are there to attack start doing so. All right, we've picked up the ball again deep and this is how all of our attacks seem to start as Mikkel Sainz has got himself in plenty of space and we know how dangerous he can be in those areas. He's racing forward alone. I said he's quite a direct runner. Ball played in. Schofield's there and it counts, I think, not offside on this occasion as Dave Schofield gets his third of the season and one of the most important goals he might score all season. As I'm just saying, they've got a lovely dinky little stadium. It's nice. It's, it's, it's homely, I would say. It's homely. It reminds me of my Thames FC days. Coming soon. But 1-1. One, one. Is there going to be a winner in the game? I don't know if it continues to extra time. As actually, it's a free kick to them. Ball played in. It could be... I was worried it was going to be a penalty for us, but it seems to have gone behind for a corner. Everything seemed to stop there. I was very nervous. Mikel is going to put the ball in. Of course, Monaco coming up. We want to make sure all of our players are fresh for it. So there's a six-day gap, so we should be okay to play. That's why I've played our relatively strong 11 here. I want to make sure I'm not falling out of this competition so early. But, I mean, we'll go slightly more positive and we'll demand a little bit more. And hopefully, the boys out there will do the business. They've got another chance. Every highlight appears to start with a free kick for them as it goes close. And I'm going to get Mikel Torreira off and bring on Joe Victor for that a little bit more quality in the final third. Attacking midfielder on support, something he prefers to play and recently has been playing a lot. Again, I've been playing uh, Mikkel Torreira and him next to each other. One as a shadow striker, one as an attacking midfielder and it's worked out pretty well so far. So we'll put him back in his more natural role. I could have maybe changed that today as well but again, having those two strikers, I do quite like it. Mikkel Torreira though, his final action of the half <sighs> goes close. Ten minutes left to go as the time is ticking away. I can I would demand more again if I can. A few minutes left, a big chance. Yanchev, free kick, final minutes of the game. Can he get the winner for us? Come on, Yanchev, we need it. And he can't do it. Diallo's there, though. Oh, he pokes it home. We are fortunate, it feels like. This was a game, I said at the start, I thought it was going to be a bit of a demolition job, but it hasn't been that way at all. It's been relatively even, and we've snatched it. Snatched it right at the very end. The goalkeeper, oh, I'll see that over and over again. They could have gone through if they saved it, but again, that's going to be a big moment for us. And we're a bit lucky, but we'll take it. And it looks as if the game is going to run its course. Yes, needs to. Flipping, I mean, <laughs> that was not comfortable. And going into this game against Monaco now, I don't feel all that calm about it. But a good comeback. I mean, to go 1-0 down, it would have been very easy for us to just sit here and watch it fall away. Shout out to the, the meal that I lost to a few years ago. But there we go. There were some big games, actually, in that round of the Cup. I didn't really mention it too much. I think I don't, where was, there was a big game between two sides. Uh, yeah, Marseille and Lyon fought against each other. And Marseille have knocked out Lyon already. Angers winning 10-0 in their game. I'm just having a look here. I can't see... See PSG, but I assume PSG will probably go through and will be a problem for us in the competition. Of course, the next round of the draw will be pretty soon too, as Monaco have signed Kai Havertz, though he doesn't actually join them until the summer, which is quite an interesting transfer because he's 36 now, and they've taken him there on a big old wage at 36 years of age. I mean, bold viewers, not a, not a transfer even I would have made. All right then, the draw. Let's see who we get in the next one. I'll, I'll go through relatively slowly. Again, we're looking for some big teams to hopefully face off against each other. 
we've got Toulouse, which is quite a tricky game, actually. Or, or, or to take, when you take everything into account, uh, Angus is going to play St Etienne. Marseille was kind of hoping we could face off against Paris Saint-Germain or Monaco, for that matter. But you can see a few of the boys are avoiding one another as uh, show are going to have to play against PSG. Good luck to them in that one. Um, but yeah, I guess Toulouse will, will kind of take it. Some smaller sides facing off against each other in the later rounds, which could prove the next couple of rounds to be really, really interesting. Down here as well, there's a couple as well. So it's going to be it's good fun. All right, then. That's where that comes to an end. Uh, we'll play Monaco. Of course, next episode, I may well have bring you, I may well have brought you at that point, some transfer business as we're in the January period. We've got some money to spend still. Um, it's difficult to know where to spend the money like i'm trying to keep the balance at nice positive when i joined it was in a pretty terrible state and even now like they lose a lot of money year on year they just don't have like the infrastructure to make a lot of money so getting them to the, into the champions league would definitely help with that a lot and then i'd be more inclined to spend all the money because i know it's going to come back in at some point especially towards the end of the season as um we've got a, a, an offer here for a center back it's no it, he's going to stay with me for now oh does he need the football hmm Hmm, I'll send him out. We'll, we'll, let him have, we'll let him have some game time. Important player, that's what's been suggested. You take him away then. Let me get him back next season. Third, fourth choice, lovely. Because right now he's probably fifth, so it makes sense. All right, quite a few players are picking up injuries here. You'll see when we go to this next game, there's a few issues. Karic is 800 games in management. Um, a lot of teams, quite a lot of club sides, quite a lot of international sides. And uh, yeah, 800 games. There you are, look. Feel free to pause if you want and try and read through as much of that as you can. All right, some big choices have to be made here because midfield-wise, we've got an injury to Bernard, who's not going to feature in this one. And Yonick is also unavailable. So Lee, Dylan Lee, is going to carry on in that role. Of course, hasn't quite got the sharpness, but has got some really, like the mental attributes especially, that work, great teamwork, uh, bravery in there as well, great technique. So I'm not too worried about having him in there, especially as sort of that defensive player, keeping things simple. That should be okay. Yanshev one side, and Marilla on the other side, who I may now change up actually to be sort of more advanced playmaker, styled player. Having these two advanced forwards, I'm going with Schofield, who when he plays with Kim uh, Hookson, you can see he's got a really good connection with them. Ivanov's been a little bit off the ball recently, so I'm not going to feature him in this one. Lucas Diallo, Haman, and Lowe at the back with Borsting in goal. It's a bit new look because obviously we're changing it, and I've and I've been wondering, like, is this season things are going pretty well, right? But are we being found out in the diamond? And am I gonna have to start altering things? Even subtly like this, maybe you can see like I've got sort of two versions of it where I was trialing it that one way and then trialing it a slightly different way. So we'll we'll see how we do. It's interesting. Still a few years into this niece journey, we're still a little bit of trial and error here and there. And what we need to find out and discover by the time we start actually challenging for things, of course, Monaco, a team that re rejected me. A bit with Derby, this as well, remember. Dimitri in their side. But what we do need to figure out with this side is what our sort of finishing formation is, if that makes sense. So the formation that we want to use will be eventually really push for a league title if we're to stay with Nice. And that so far seems to be the plan, to stay with Nice, to build them up and then make them into a true contender for the title. It's not going to be easy. And I, I always thought about having a project at the end in France secretly hoping PSG would offer me the job and it would be a bit easy. But no, this this is definitely what we've got. And it could have gone one, of course, one of two ways. And we're sort of settling on this for now as uh, Monaco already looking dangerous. It's one of those games that if we lose, it's like a proper six-pointer this. We've got a corner. Amarillo to play it in towards that front post. Lucas and it's headed clear. And now there's a bit of a 2v2, although we are trying to get it back quickly if we can. What's happening? I mean, can you get back in the fold here, Schofield? Just taking your sweet time about it. As uh, they're forced a little bit wide. Again, it's one of those situations. If we win this back, we haven't quite won it back because <laughs> Dimitri gets it. There was, a, there was a chance for us maybe to break there. As the covering over the left-hand side is not too bad. Oh, my word, Dimitri. I mean, he did that quite a few times for me as Valencia boss. And, uh, yeah, provided by Vukadinovic, which I don't know how you say it. And maybe it is. Who's a very good player. And, uh, yeah, Dimitri with a really, really good goal. This is horribly familiar, viewers. Horribly familiar. It's a great strike. Flipping it. In terms of player quality, there's no doubt in my mind that Monaco are a better side than us. But in terms of, you know, shock factor, we probably have it. PSG find that last season. As Joao Victor, now there's a man who could play for Monaco. That He's got that sort of quality. Finds Lucas on that side. Ball maybe played into the centre. We've got two players waiting. Well, there's a foul. Is he going to give a penalty? He's going over, viewers. But quick, viewers, quick. Hang on. Free kick. I can't believe I've done all that for a free kick. Didn't even get to see the free kick. Are you joking? All right, 37 minutes gone. We'll try and demand a little bit more. The boys aren't playing 
horrendous, horrendously. Schofield's having a bit of an off day, so maybe Ivanov, if this this might be his moment. Come on, great save that by the way from Borsting. That could have easily been a goal. It's one nil before half time. If they get another one, that forces us to change things maybe a little bit more radically so we've got the ball forward towards Schofield so far quiet game from him big chance though oh and blimey Charlie take him off I don't think so 1-1 Nice back in it on loan from Manchester City Dave Schofield with the goal that's what we're talking about Really great work from Kim Hook Su here to play the ball forward. I said these two boys have got a bit of a connection going this season, and he does really great. First touch is fantastic. The finish sublime, and we're back on level terms. Okay, come on. So I did say a bit of a six point in this. If you lose it, you're in trouble. If you win it, your, your season's looking pretty bright. Oh, mate, if there was four Champions League spots, I'd be so less concerned. But because there's only three, this game especially means so much more. I will say Marseille... Terrible start to the season. We're bottom of the league for a while. As goodness me, what a finish! They were bottom of the league for the first few games, and they've lost one in sort of the last three months. They've been unbelievably good and fought their way back in. So the fact we beat them away from home felt huge. We're now playing Monaco, who have scored two goals that have been pretty similar and have been great strikes. It's quite a nice move from them as well. It's worth noting. But the, the game so far very very even. And although he scored a goal, I'm still maybe thinking about taking him off. Lee is struggling a little bit out there, but there's not really a natural player to bring on. <sighs> okay, I'm going to do something that I didn't think I'd be doing, but this is what I'm going to do. Forget the triangles, viewers. We're playing in squares now. In fact, I might even do it slightly differently, where Joe Victor continues, and then he's sort of just playing off on that side. Um... Oh, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't want those two to swap around. Just move slightly more central. No, please make... I can't make it any more obvious. There we go. So that's what we're going to go for for the last few moments. These, these we're, too, we're way too attacking going forward. Hang on a minute here. All right, let's see. Can that little change make a difference? Lee was having a quiet game. I don't really know how much he was impacting things, if I'm honest. And now we're trying to overload in the more advanced areas. That's the plan. 15 minutes to go. Can something come from it? 10 minutes to go. We need to... Oh, it's, well, it's going to six point. We can't lose it. We move into sixth if we lose it, but we are losing it. I'm not really sure what else to change. I'm going to move low forward as a wing back, playing him slightly higher up as a starting position. Lucas, I'm going to do the same with you on the other side. I mean, a few minutes to go. Not a lot of time. Let's say four minutes now. Chance. I mean, it's their chance. I thought it was our free kick, and it's not. And if they score it, it's over. But if we counter, well, that's all, that's all we can do, really. Two minutes left. Taking their time. Borsty makes a really good save, but the quality of low with a free kick. Oh my word, I thought that was going to be a moment for us. Not quite. It's been such an even game. Possession, 50-50. Both of us have had one clear-cut chance each. We've both had eight shots on target, and we've just not done it. They've scored two really good goals, and it's just, to me, it just feels like their quality. Like, Dimitri would waltz into my team. 28-year-old Russian, so good. Deutschman as well, good player. Solid, nothing particularly special about him, but he's the right back and he scored a phenomenal goal. And again, talking about some of their players, like they've got some real, real quality in this team. And we've come on the stock viewers against Monaco. Ah, so frustrating because it's such a close game. But this is the the dangers of Glory Hunter, I guess, in a way that sometimes you'll you'll have a really good performance and you won't quite make it. And that's just what today feels like it's been. But regardless, have you enjoyed it, viewers? If you have, please do drop a like on it. If you want to see some more, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again tomorrow for a whole lot more um, and as well all sorts going on tomorrow Show, stream a showdown draft at 7 o'clock too so I'll see you for that goodbye oh it's so that's the sort of game that if you win it it's going to be a special season but now we've got a battle on our hands